as the knowledge of organic chemistry progressed, uh, it became obvious that no single Lewis structure provides a truly accurate representation. For example, uh, let's uh, look at the structure of acetate ion. Uh, it can be represented in two ways, this way or this way. In both cases, uh, we have a C and O double bond, such as this one, and a C and O single bond, as shown here. So, when experimental studies were done to measure the bond lengths, uh, it was expected that uh, one of the bond should be smaller than the other one because we know that the double bonds are smaller than single bonds. So experimentally, we should observe that uh, this bond should be smaller than that one or this bond should be smaller than uh, this carbon and single bond. However, when experimental studies were uh, done, surprise, surprise, it was found that both carbon and oxygen bonds were equal in size. That was really surprising. And then there were many other evidences also which uh, uh, pointed out that the, that the Lewis structures in many cases are not correct. To explain all these differences, a theory of resonance was developed uh, in 1930s. This theory was mainly developed by Pauling. According to this theory, many molecules and ions are best described by writing two or more Lewis structures and considering the real molecule or ion to be a composite of these structures. So now what do I mean by that? The meaning is, uh, for example, in case of acetate ion, the one which we used in previous slide the two structures are one of them is this one and then the other one is this one now the composite of these two structure is a structure in which both carbon and oxygen bonds have some partial double bond character and the negative charge is spread uh, uh, throughout or localized in both of these bonds. So this would be the composite structure of uh, these two um, possible Lewis structures of acetate ion. Now in the composite structure both the C and O bonds are equal in size. They are uh, larger than um, double bond but smaller than single bond so somewhere in the middle so we can consider them as a bond and a half the individual structures such as these ones are called uh, the contributing structures they are also sometimes referred to as resonance structures or resonance contributors The real molecule is known as resonance hybrid structure, such as this one. The resonance contributing structures are represented by or are connected by a double headed arrow. So we represent the contributing structure in this format. The examples of uh, resonance uh, contributing structures of nitrite ion and acetate ions are shown here. And we uh, represent these structures uh, by uh, separating them with a double headed arrow. Now, this double headed arrow is not the same as the reversible arrow which we see in chemical equations. This is not a chemical reaction. And also, this kind of representation may suggest you or give you a, an impression that uh, the bonds and electron pairs are constantly changing back and forth. See, it does look like it's going back and forth and then they're changing forms. But that's not a 
but that's not correct so this is not what actually happens it's not a back and forth hopping of electrons and bond between the two uh, resonance structures now the problem is or the question is how to draw the real one real structure so what is the correct structure if uh, neither of these two are correct the resonance method is a way to describe the real structure and at the same time it retains Lewis structures with electron uh, pair bond so thus although we realize that uh, neither of these uh, 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 neither of these two nitride structures accurately represent uh, the true structure but we still show the formula or structure of nitride ion by uh, writing either one of these two structures when we write the resonance contributing structures we use curved arrows curved arrows are symbol used to show the redistribution of valence electrons a common mistake is to use curved arrows to indicate the movement of atoms or positive charges. This is incorrect. Curved arrows must be used only to show the repositioning of electron pairs. For example, in case of acetate, If we use curved arrow to show the movement of uh, an atom or anything or a positive charge, that will be incorrect. The correct is that we show curved uh, the movement of electrons with the help of curved arrow. So uh, this lone pair becomes a double bond, and the bond pair from the double bond becomes a lone pair, and this whole structure will become so the new structure will have a double bond here and a single bond in this side but extra lone pair with a negative charge so these two are the resonance contributor now in the right hand side structure again this can go back and this will go back here so that's how we use the curved arrows when we use curved arrow there are only two allowed type of electron distribution first one is a from bond to adjacent atom that is this one this is the example from bond to adjacent atom and the second is from a lone pair to adjacent bond and the example of this is this one from the bond to adjacent remember the word adjacent is important uh, so when uh, when you move electron for example this electron this electron cannot go to this bond so movement of this electron to from here to here is impossible because it cannot hop an atom so it has to be between the adjacent atom so this is impossible A curved arrow is nothing more than a symbol uh, which is used to keep track of electron pairs. Sometimes we call it arrow pushing or sorry, electron pushing. Electron pushing is extremely important survival skill in organic chemistry. It will help you to see the relationship among contributing structures. When we write uh, contributing structures during a resonance uh, phenomenon we must abide by uh, these rules so first rule is all uh, must have the same number of valence electrons and then every atom must obey the rule of covalent bonding which is no more than two electrons for valence shell of hydrogen and no no more than eight electrons in the valence shell of second period elements such as carbon oxygen nitrogen a third rule is every atom differ only in the distribution uh, 
uh, of valence electrons the position of all nuclei must remain the same so in other words you cannot change the position of atoms or the structure basic skeletal structure of uh, any molecule cannot be altered only thing uh, which can change is the position of uh, uh, bonds or in other words the pi bonds and lone pairs final rule is all have same number of paired and unpaired electron in other words you cannot have extra electrons or less electrons you cannot gain or lose electrons when you write electronic uh, when you write resonating uh, contributing structures when we write the resonance structure of a molecule many times not all structures will contribute equally to the resonance hybrid the example of carbonate ion which is shown here it has three contributing structures in this case all three structures are contributing equally so we call these structures as equivalent contributing structures so in this case the negative charge is distributed equally among all three uh, oxygen atoms hence the resonance hybrid which is shown here so this is the hybrid structure is symmetrical structure and as you can see uh, the electron charge density which is uh, represented by the red cloud here is distributed equally uh, throughout the molecule in case the contributing structures do not contribute equally then we describe four ways to predict which structure contributes more to the hybrid so first preference is filled valence shell the structures in which all atoms uh, have filled valence shells contribute more than those with one or more unfilled valence shell for example we can write uh, two uh, resonance structures for uh, uh, this molecule such as this one now if we count the number of valence shell in carbon you will see two here two here and two here so this carbon has only six valence shells Oh, sorry valence electrons on the other hand all the atoms in this contributing structure all atoms have complete octets hence this structure contributes more many times it may get confusing because uh, why it may get confusing because we may tend to think oh their oxygen has a positive charge and oxygen does not like positive charge so they should contribute less it's quite the opposite yes oxygen does not prefer the positive charge and it makes it highly unstable however in this uh, form both oxygen and carbon has completely full octets which is not the case as shown in the structure of right hand side so uh, so the right hand side structures contributes less the hybrid structure will be more towards this one so the hybrid structure look more like the left hand side structure and it will look less like right hand side structure the second preference is that the maximum number of covalent bonds uh, are preferred or in other words in resonance contributing structure the structure with more covalent bonds will contribute more again in this case the structure on the left hand side has more covalent bond it has eight covalent bonds and the structure on the right hand side has seven covalent bonds so this also uh, tells us that the left hand side structure will contribute more to the resonance hybrid Our preference is separation of unlike charges 
So what it says is that the structures with separation of unlike charges such as positive and negative contribute less. So if positive and char negative charges are separate or separate by a big distance then those structures will contribute less. So for example uh, acetone can be shown as these two resonance structures uh, but if you we see here the structure on the right hand side we have a separation of charges so the oxygen has a negative charge carbon has a positive charge so that's why it does not contribute much to the resonance also the carbon here has uh, uh, only six electrons around it six valence electrons so that also makes us less contributing there are too many crosses against it so what happens is even though we can write the uh, uh, write acetone as a resonance hybrid of these two structures but because the structure on the right hand side contributes so less it's almost negligible or next to zero so that's why the actual structure of acetone is the exactly same as what the one shown on the left hand side now the final preference is negative charge on more electronegative element so those resonance contributing structures which carry a negative charge on more electronegative atom will contribute more than those with negative charge on less electronegative element for example in case of acetone this is the structure of acetone now we can either write the uh, structure of a resonance structure of acetone like this one or this one we already discussed that this structure is not very uh, preferred because uh, carbon does not have a completely uh, fill octet so that's why it's not very stable so it contributes less now on the other hand if you write the resonance structure such as this one uh, how do we write this structure so so what uh, you are doing here is you are bringing this electron here and you are saying that oh this should be the resonance structure Now this structure is absurd. Why? Because now not only uh, oxygen has only uh, six valence electrons, which makes it unstable. Oxygen is carrying a positive charge. Now oxygen is highly, highly electronegative. The negative charge is on carbon. Carbon is not that electronegative. So this structure is so unstable that it should not even be written should not even be drawn so it does not contribute at all so it's it doesn't even exist the structure on the left hand side it is possible but it contributes negligibly the structure on the right hand side it should not even be drawn with that we conclude chapter number one this chapter was a review of important concepts from general chemistry in this chapter we discussed or reviewed the electronic structure of atoms we learned uh, uh, well you pr already learned it uh, so we reviewed lewis model of bonding and we talked about functional groups and then we discussed the bond angles and shape of molecules polarity of molecule and then we discussed quantum mechanic uh, quantum mechanics or wave mechanics and we uh, reviewed how uh, a combined valence bond theory and molecular orbital theory is uh, a better approach to explain the structures and shapes of organic molecules and finally we uh, uh, discuss important rules of writing the resonating uh, resonance contributing structures uh,